is whip to dash and we're going to do a campaign trail of Ulysses Julius. A role playing gameplay preview that will include plenty of details of what's going on. Here in the time as you can see the year one six one may eighth here in the roman empire is just beginning there's a rebellion for the throne itself rome has now been taken over by our character ulysses dullius so, just to get a little prelude on everything, this is a huge map of the realm that we're getting ready to deal with. We have quite many adventures and journeys to go. The Roman Empire expands fast beyond this. Roman Hispania, here in this pinkish Roman Asia, another conquering as you can see they have quite a vast empire themselves anyways so we take place here in Italy obviously we're in BC times it seems to be what looks to be Now, two factions we've wiped out for the face of the earth. The Samaritans We've not this faction, they have no longer it occupies nowhere as you notice. Then we have the Bosphorus Bosporan, my bad. Nowhere. It is gone. And right now, the Roman Empire is on the brink of losing its properties. Marcus Aurelius now calls the Supreme Roman Army. He's at war with the Revelation Kingdom, which is what we are now. The Ulysses is running. The Roman Empire has gotten the worst of the fight. And as you can see, he's taken major losses. Roman Empire is at war with the Burgundians Burgundionis, whatever you guys want to call that. It's begun relatively, re relatively recently and the war may continue for some time. The Roman Empire, the Roman Empire I can't even speak, <coughs> has no outstanding issues with Dacia. Roman Empire is at war with the Kingdom of Parthia. Ooh. Partia, very very strong empire. So, anyways, Romans got their own ha problems right now, and our character is here holding the northern parts of the Roman Empire, or what used to be Samaria. It is now gone. He now owns these properties here, all the way to Satala. Tineus. Now here. Lady Ethin, a vassal, and very odd here, nobody's home, but she is, Lady Bredi, two lady lord vassals here in the kingdom of the Revelation Kingdom, whatever that means for some of you. Use your imagination, be whatever you want to be. Now, here we have Roman Elysium. I know the colors are red, and this is the reason why I started the war with these guys is to remove them. But what I'm going to go ahead and start a storyline with Ulysses and do a role playing chapter by chapter and see how we get over there. 
So, our young warrior was here at Rome deciding whether to take on Ravenna and Tarentum. So we'll start the story as this. It's May 8th in 161. It's midnight. Ulysses Dulius, former ex-veteran legion commander. He has now left the legion and no longer a commander. Set up his own little temple here, the Temple of Peace. A garrisoned fort that he's united almost 492 soldiers under. And as you can see, Rome itself he has taken over and ripped from Marcus Aurelius. Now, he started a war with Marcus Aurelius right here at Rome, took Rome. Took the outlying cities and towns that were in villages that were all around. Now, keep in mind, property does differ between Ravenna. Now, Neopolis of Roman, the Roman Empire, I should say, has now been under control for some time. So, here we go with Ulysses. It's at midnight and Ulysses just thinks to his head. If we could take on Tarentum. You could see Marcus Aurelius' forces would gather up here. 308 men lying in Tribune Tatius' party. We could wipe them off the face of the earth. But look at all these raiders and bandits. We could make their part, we could make their life a living hell if we'd knock them down, but no, our focus right here is Ravenna. The goddess known as Manius' party has 16. And Emperor Marcus Aurelius, not even at full health. With 153 troops, Ulysses thinks. Can this possibly be a, a way out? No. So, in the decision made, Ulysses finally catches up on the trail. It is now May 9th. On the tail of the Emperor's Marcus Aurelius. And now the ambush is set up. Ulysses is grasped for this chance. Because Marcus Aurelius as Emperor. If he takes this. This will be a crushing blow to the Roman Empire. A crushing blow. To Marcus Aurelius' Pride. The Red Eagle will no longer stand for what it stands for. Everybody charge! As Ulysses grants the battlefield his own, he holds no back because this is not the time nor the place weakness will be abound. All Ulysses soldiers know that. Ulysses Dulius a man who has slain over 3,000 soldiers knows when death is upon us that not even night or day can keep away the wolf when he's ready to eat. And Ulysses considered the wolf of the battlefield knows there's no bounds. His army takes hold here. There could be a time where Marcus Aurelius will have to face the truth. Fate and destiny do not go together by no means. Ulysses knows one thing if he holds the battleground here. Ravenna will be used to conquer. He can strengthen the northern border. Romana Asia, or the Roman Asia as we would call it, 
is what we have to worry about next. A foe that Ulysses knows that if he doesn't take out quickly, it will be the end of him. An empire who has vasted itself by just strengthening its borders all the way around. You know it could only be constructed by loyal lords and high kings with such money who could have such things. Because in these times and ages, money, money, silver, was the way to talk. And Ulysses, after conquering so many villages and slaying so many, the plunders and the treasures at the end of the bodies, oh my friend, it's a wonderful thing when your armies can reproduce in minutes and seconds. And that's one thing we don't have to worry about. The Roman Empire is under great pressure. Marcus Aurelius is about to be dethroned. By somebody who has butchered thousands of his troops. And stands on his ground taunting with a sword and a spear. There could be no other, they say. But as Ulysses holds blood upon his face, he knows that there will be an end to it all. Marcus Aurelius will face a new enemy, a new threat. Ones that hold the keys to the future. Of course, we lose some men on the battlefield, but the enemy casualties to 48 to 7, that's a major loss. But do you, Ulysses at what? 13 by himself. Oh, wow. His great friend, Adelwyn. A victory that shall be going on. 449 troops still holding against Emperor Marcus Aurelius' 108. Surrounded, it seems to be. That even that many troops, Ulysses knows he can take the battlefield at any moment that he wants. Any moment he pleases. So he calls on the charge, the blitz. And charge they go. Every man for himself. The barbarian army that Ulysses grants knows there's no one else who can withstand the barbaric atrocities these guys have. No mercy for their enemies. Axes, pitchforks, knives, it don't really matter. A weapon is a weapon. Even to the common style legionnaire, who's made ranked in formation, cannot withstand a barbaric sword lashing against their back and gnarling at the armor that they have constructed. Even of their best blacksmiths. Within seconds, Ulysses knows the battle is only just the beginning. He cuts Marcus Aurelius' forces by half now. There will be no more territorial war in the north. Bandits will stop Marcus Aurelius from really covering a new army. Holding vast, he can weaken his army and make sure that he cannot rebuild. at least to withstand the next attack. So we know that Ulysses must prevail. And he must not hold back on his next move because 
His next move will be vital. He may siege the wrong town knowing that his back is face turned to a more powerful enemy. You don't want to be in that situation. And Ulysses, it seems to be, knows that deal too. Every man on the battlefield must feel the wrath of the sword. They know what they signed up for. And even in the dark, nighttime coming, the moon gives Ulysses the victory on this battle. We lost nobody. They lost a total of 22 soldiers. Now they have 86 to the 449. Now we're going to send the troops, so Ulysses sends and all of his troops in, losing a total of almost 50 troops. Marcus Aurelius sending 75. He's got 11 to our 402. Ah, we saved the last moment for best. Now Ulysses knows he can have the battlefield for the night time. But this is it. Finish them off. Kill them all. Not one will live tonight. You will conquer those who rise against the Revelation Kingdom. And those who do not want to participate, well, seems to me we've got better plans for them. It seems to me our warriors have found and met up with our Roman enemies here. And they're almost all dead. Oh, no, they are. The field is ahead, Ulysses. Come on. Piercing spear across the plain. So we have to save the cavalry. This guy's almost dead. It's almost over as Ulysses sees. There's only a few men upon the horizon, realizing that there's not much time left. Time is of the essence. When you're marching in an army this big, hunting down every last man, making sure there are no survivors, no prisoners. The barbaric army of Ulysses knows there could be no other. Oh yes. Until we continue on part two, thank you guys very much.